Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and today we're going to do a software tutorial. We're going to take a look at the software of choice that I use in Six Sigma. We're going to look at SPC Excel. Hope you enjoy it. Excel and the little tutorial we're going to do today, we're going to look at some uh, analysis diagrams, namely the histogram and the CPK diagram. Although I'm going to link those with the run chart as well. So I've got some data set, it's highlighted there in the yellow fields. And it's continuous data. It's, it's measuring the noise output from an assembly in decibels. So all these numbers here are in decibels. And I'm just going to show you very easily how SPC Excel works and also some simple ways of uh, turning this data into pictures. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to highlight the data set and I'm going to go run chart, histogram, CPK. Always do those three together when you've got variable data, when you are measuring something. So the first one I'm going to do is the run chart. I'm going to use just basic Excel functionality there it is. Um, it's just a basic run chart, a basic line graph. Um, what am I looking for? Well, your process is supposed to be a random number generator. Therefore, the, the graph is just supposed to wander across the page, which is exactly what it's doing. It's not really moving up and down. It's stuck at a mean level here of about 51 decibels. There's no obvious signals or trends in it. That's the sign of a random number generator. That is what the run chart shows you. It's exactly what you want to see, really. Now I'm going to go to Sigma Zone. And I'm going to generate a histogram. Click on Histogram. It always asks you this question, the software. Is this the data set that you want to analyze? So, yes, normally you've highlighted that data first. And then the little wizard opens up. Histogram appears. You've got the anchor point, which is always the smallest data point here in your data set. And you've got the class width. How wide is this bar? So what I'm just going to do is tidy the class width up and I'm just going to leave it at 0.5 just to make it a little bit easy to read. Click Next. Then here you get the opportunity to put a title. Now, this was Model 2. Now this is really important that you put a title on these diagrams in Sigma Zone because the only link to the original data set is the title. Because of the way the macros work, they break the link between the data set and the diagram. So if you draw lots of diagrams, the only way to remember where the data came from is what you put in the title. So I would advise you to, to get a good title on this on these diagrams and then I'm just going to click finish so there's my histogram it's showing me that the data is is nicely normal uh, sometimes people want you to do uh, some kind of statistical test to test for normality here's the simple test here's the purple normal distribution look that's what you're trying to represent if it goes up in the middle and down at the sides, the blue bars, it's as near to normal as makes no difference. That's normal. I don't need to do a test to tell me. If you've got odd shapes, bits of data sticking out the side, flyers sticking out the side, that's always a bad sign. It's a sign that something's wrong with your process. A nice random number generator should generate a nice normal distribution. That's exactly what my data set is doing. Back to the data and finally, I'm going to draw a CPK diagram. Here we go down on the list, CPK. I have two choices. Do I want the data to create the mean and the standard deviation, the software to create the mean and the standard deviation from the data set? Yes, I do. Sometimes you may only have the mean and the standard deviation and you can manually input it. That's the second choice, but I'm going to let the software do the calc here. Is this the data set that you want to analyze? Yes, it is. 
got to put a spec in. For me, the specs are 52 at the top, 46 at the bottom. And click OK. OK, now then. It's taken the data and it's calculated the red zone. It's making a prediction. The red zone is quantified by this figure here, the defects per million. DPM, the defects per million. The red zone, it says 119,000 defects in a million. In other words, 11.9%. That is a predicted figure. It is not an observed defect rate. It's very important. So one of the reasons why we do the histogram and the CP and that CPK analysis together, it's going to use that purple distribution to estimate the defect rate. I need to make sure that shape is true so that I know the red zone will be a good estimate of the actual defect rate when I switch the machine on. This is a prediction. It is not an observed value. Okay, so run chart, histogram, CPK. The three diagrams should be used together on continuous data. Well, I hope you found that uh, useful. Uh, if you've got any questions about that topic, or indeed anything to do with Six Sigma, or Lean for that matter, give me a call and I hope to hear from you soon.